James 1.26 says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is meaningless. James 1.26 If we believe that we are religious yet we can't bridle our tongue and yet and we deceive our heart, we do not have true religion because true religion is relationship. True relationship is with God. The true God is the triune God, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we repent of our sins, we enter into newness of life, and we enter into the faith, and then our religion becomes true because we have believed in the true triune God. One true one, one true triune God, excuse me. One God, three persons. So when we... Uh, we see all over that there are many religious people. Many people are doing good things, but they do it for themselves. They do it in order to be seen as a good person. Their motives and intents are for themselves. It's nothing to do with God. And it's just, it, you know, it's just, it's sad, it's tragic, and it's just, you, when you think about it, when you, the more you know about God, the more foolish and stupid it is to try and make something, make a carved image, make an idol, make a statue, and then to worship that very thing that you made. Because by logic, that which we make, we are outside of it. And if that thing couldn't be without our doing, in a sense, we're worth more and we're better than that very thing. So statues and carvings and all that are just completely... Um, idiotic and especially to repre to think of them as actual gods um, even representations and and those who know the one true triune god the christian god the god of abraham isaac and jacob we know that god is timeless he is spaceless he's incorporeal he is self-sufficient self-existent i mean this is a mighty powerful awesome god why in the world would people want to worship that which they make? And so those who go through the religious practices of going into synagogues and, and going um, into temples and worshiping these things that they have carved and made, those who go through religious practices and try to obey the 600 plus uh, commandments, um, as being Jews, those who wash their pots and pans, those who um, just try to be just good and nice people, but neglect sin, their the religion is meaningless. There is no merit. Because if we don't bridle our tongue and we deceive our heart, we are not going to have a true religion. Because if we never watch what we say, people can say a lot of good things, but at the end of the day, uh, if we don't bridle our tongue, I mean, if we're offensive to other people and we constantly hate other people and ridicule, I mean, I have some wonderful, um, very kind, nice people on uh, social media who are Jewish. Uh, they're business people. They're they're um, doing very well. But yet, throughout all this time, when we had Trump the last four years, and I don't care who the who the president is, we shouldn't um, have vehemently hate towards that person and constantly allow that that specific president to rule our spirit uh, but these Jewish men who are very kind every day they're posting about something that's just hatred towards Trump and, and they would not bridle their tongue and so they they want to practice religion they want to be play the game of religion they want to be very kind and, and nice which they are but yet they neglect that when it comes to someone that they disagree with or don't like that is very hypocritical and it's deceptive to the heart and so those who play the game of religion they are going to deceive their hearts because they're never going to look at the full scope of their life they're never going to look at the full scope of what is going on externally and internally within them and this is what leads to a damning uh religion because even if, um, as Jews, they worship, uh, you know, the true God, Yahweh, but they don't worship uh, Jesus Christ. They neglect the deity of Christ, which uh, 
is clearly against biblical teaching and scripture and against what the one true God has said. And we even see Old Testament prophets spoke of Christ's coming. We need to go no further uh, than Isaiah 53, I believe, to see that there was definitely a prophetic word that uh, Christ would be bruised for our iniquities and crushed for our transgressions. And he did this because he loved us. And, um, you know, there's, there's all kind of evidence, even in the Old Testament, but they don't want to acknowledge that. And so what happens is, is people will indulge in false religions because they don't look at the whole view of what they're saying, what they're speaking, and what they are thinking and doing, and what is going on within and without. And because of that, their religion is meaningless. So we as born-again believers, we need to not merely talk the talk, we need to walk the walk. We have the truth, we know the truth, and we need to live out and walk in the truth as well as speak the truth. And when disagreements come, when people blaspheme the name of God, when people ridicule and persecute us, we have one of two choices. We can get very angry and just respond as they would, or we can have the um, firmness of speaking the truth, but also the discernment to still be gentle spirited towards people and not give in and to um, slandering other people because that's the way of the world. We don't need to slander other people. Uh, we do need to call out false religion and call out false prophets. And we do need to make sure that people are aware that there is such a thing as truth and truth responds to reality and that there are many uh, apologetic arguments for the existence of God as well as many historical claims um, and proofs that Jesus was who he said he was. Uh, which, by the way, Gary Habermas, I don't know if he's published it yet, but he's publishing, I think it's somewhere between a five to 10,000 book on the resurrection of Christ and all the arguments against it, and then all the proofs that we have, not just biblical texts and manuscripts, but also um, outside texts speaking about Christ's life. And I mean, there's going to be so much proof in that. I mean, it's going to be a wonderful work. But regardless of what the world does, we need to understand that we know the truth and we need to live it out. We need to be discerning. We need to bridle our tongues and we need to not allow the world to seep into us lest we deceive ourselves and deceive our hearts and we just become mere hearers of the word but not doers of the word. So may God give us discernment. May he give us wisdom. Uh, may we bridle our tongue in order that our religion may be true because it's based upon our relationship with Christ who has given us access to God, uh, the triune God, which is the Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son and the Holy Spirit.